In this video, we're going to learn about drawing on the torus. So remember, the torus is S1, the surface of genus 1. So this is what it looks like, basically a donut. Um, and the idea is we're interested in embeddings, right? And embeddings are pictures drawn in a given surface that don't have any edge crossings. So we saw a couple video, videos ago that K5... Um, cannot be drawn on the sphere, right? We saw a video that said that K5 was not planar, and we also saw in that same video that drawing on the plane is the same as drawing on the sphere. So let's think about drawing on the torus. So here, we're going to create a little five cycle, and we're going to add two edges on the interior, and then there are three more edges we need to add. So for example, one of them, we can go around the hole like this and add here. And then we're still missing this edge and this edge. Okay, so one of them can just go around the hole like this. Okay, so now we're just missing this edge. And so we can't go around like this anymore, right? These two edges are sort of blocking off getting to this vertex, but what we can do instead is go down the, and around the back side of this thing and sneak through that way. Now, this is not a crossing because if you think about actually drawing this on an inner tube, right, none of these marker lines would ever pass over each other, right? These would be on the front and this would be sort of around the back. So there's no lines that are actually crossing each other here. So here, this is an embedding of K5 on the torus. So it can't be drawn on S0, but it can be on S1, right, as we've just done. Okay, so let's think about another one of these. Similarly, we know K33 cannot be drawn on S0. Right, but can K33 be drawn on the torus? Okay, so let's just do our six cycle picture. Okay, so here we have this, so we're missing this diagonal edge and this diagonal edge. So one of these can go around the outside, and then the other one. Right, can go up and then around the back like this. And now here's K33 drawn on the torus. Okay, <clears throat> now in theoretically you could do this, right? I mean, you can do this for any surface. So we talked about like the double torus and the triple torus, um, but mostly we just want to restrict ourselves to the sphere and the torus or the plane and what's going to be called the identification space. Okay, so we don't really want to have to do this sort of like um, spatial reasoning when we're drawing these graphs, right? So everyone has different levels of strength in terms of spatial reasoning, and some for some people it's going to be really hard to see that this 3D picture exactly what's happening. So we actually have a better way to draw these things, and that's called the identification space. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to start with the torus, and we're going to take some scissors and cut it, cut the inner tube. Right? And that's going to give us just basically a long tube, right? So you can sort of un, unbend these two pieces, like bend this out and bend this out, and you get this. Then we're going to take those same scissors and cut along the top. And that's just going to give us basically something that looks like a sheet of paper. Now the trick is, for this sheet of paper, that if I had, say, a loop that was going around like this, when I cut this, now that loop is just going to look like this. And so see, I've drawn some arrows here to indicate that this edge with the arrows is really the same thing as this edge with the arrows. So now this loop sort of goes out this way and then just jumps through back on the other side. Okay, so similarly, if I were to have an edge sort of going across this way, in the same way that we cut, 
Well, that's still going to be a loop, right, on this one, right? We sort of cut it right here, and then there's this loop is still going to be there. But then when I cut this top, right, now this loop is just going to look like an edge. Okay, so essentially what's happening here in this space is anytime I have an edge that goes off the right side, it just comes in immediately back on the left side. Or anytime I draw an edge that goes down through the bottom, it immediately comes out the top. So if you ever played the old Asteroids game, um, or like Pac-Man or something like that, that's how this works, right? If you go out one side, you come back on the other side at the same height. Or if you come out, go out the bottom, you come back out on the top at the same um, sort of horizontal space. So let's see this in action. So we just saw that K5 can be embedded on the torus. Okay, so really, um, let's draw one on this identification space. Okay, so I'm going to try and do one similar to this picture that we had up here. Okay, this one. Okay. So I'm going to start with our five cycle. And if you want to pause the video, you might try just pausing it and see if you can figure out how this works. Okay, and then I'm going to add my two interior edges again. Okay, and now, right, this edge last time, the edge that goes between these two went around the whole of the torus. So this time it's just going to go out to the left and come back in at the right. Right, so really, we're, so as soon as we sort of leave out this edge, we're coming back in on this edge. And if you want to keep track of these things, it's not a bad idea to sort of label these edges so you can because you might have a picture where a lot of them are involved. So we'll just say this is edge number one. Um, and then there was another one that did that same thing, right? So there was this edge, the one that went from here to here, also went around the whole of the torus. So that one's going to go across, and then it's going to spit out right here. And then the last one was this edge, and it went through the hole, not around the hole, but through the hole. So that's going to be the equivalent of this one sort of going up and coming out here. So this identification space, right, so-called because the top and the bottom are really the same, right? So if you go out the top, you come back out at the same spot. Or if you go out the bottom, you come back out on the same spot at the top. If you go out the left, you come back out on the same spot at the right. So here's an example of K5 that corresponds to our picture above, if you want to rewind the video and go back and look at the embedding. Okay, <clears throat> so let's try this one more time. Let's think about embedding K33 on S1. Okay, so again, I'm going to try and do a picture similar to what we had up top. So I'm going to start with my six cycle. And then I think we added this edge. Maybe I'll go double check just in case. Yeah, okay, so then we added this one, and we've got our six cycle, so then these two go through the hole, these two go around the hole. Okay, so let's see that in action. All right, and again, you might want to pause and just do this for yourself if you want. So the edge between these two went around the hole, so that's going to go left, right. Right, and we'll label these edge one. And then these two went through the hole, right? So that's going to be something like this. Right, and now here we've got K33 embedded on the sphere. And the reason this works, right, is you can imagine sort of gluing these edges back together, right? And then like gluing the ends of the, the tube back together. And then what you would essentially have is those embeddings that we started with above. So this is just a convenient way to sort of draw on a piece of paper without having to do 3D spatial reasoning, right? So you can just imagine, right, um, that when something goes out the top, it comes back at the bottom. So if you ever played any computer games or video games, there are a lot that sort of work in this identification way. And that's how this works. Um, okay. So the genus of a graph is the smallest k such that g can be embedded on sk. And we denote that with a gamma, a lowercase gamma. So the genus of a graph is in some sense, um, what's the smallest genus surface you can draw it on? 
So for example, the genus of K5, so you might want to pause and think about what the genus of K5 and K33 are. But it turns out, right, the genus of K5 is 1 because you know you can draw it on S1, the torus. That's what we just got done doing. And we also know that you cannot draw it on anything smaller, right, namely the sphere or the plane because this is non-planar. And similarly, K33 can be drawn on the torus, S1, but not on S0. So there are two pieces of information you need when you're trying to prove the genus of a graph. You need to find some k such that it can be drawn on sk, and then show that if you go one lower, it can't be drawn there. So like for example here, you can draw on the torus, but not on the sphere. You can draw on the torus, but not on the sphere. And so in this case, or rather in this class, we're going to be focusing generally on graphs that have genus 1 or genus 0, that is, planar graphs or toroidal graphs. Um, so, this is our sort of intro to embedding on the torus, and you might try playing around with some of these, um, just finding some graphs that you know are not planar and try drawing them on the identification space. Um, and there will be some like these in the homework as well.